Let's add custom blocks to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we're back into a little ones more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding custom blocks over here to our Minecraft project. And this is going to very closely mirror the way that we are adding the items. But let's take a look. In the tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called block. And inside of there, we'll need the Java class and that's the mod blocks class. We're going to add it to the Git and then we'll see what this mod blocks class entails. The first thing, of course, is going to be, well, we need a way to register our blocks. And to do that, we need a deferred register again. So we're going to make a public static final deferred register and then hit tab to auto complete it and then the angle brackets again and here we write block making sure and this is extremely important we choose net minecraft world level block hit tab to auto complete it you can double check if you've chosen the correct block class by taking a look at your imports and if your import says anything but net minecraft world level block block you've chosen the wrong block class you can simply delete that and re-import it so you can see I can click on this and pr press alt and enter and once again make sure to choose net minecraft world level block block and then you're good to go. The name of this deferred register is going to be blocks and that's going to be equal to a deferred register dot create passing into this forge registries simply hit tab to auto complete it again and we're going to choose blocks in this case and then tutorial mod dot mod id once again i'm just hitting tab to auto complete it and there you go and as always of course all of the code is also available down below in the github repository so you can double check as well if there's anything unclear now we need a register method once again this is going to be a public static void register method with an i event bus of course and that parameter is going to be called event bus Inside of the method, we're going to call the register method of the deferred register and passing in exactly that event bus right there. And to sort of finish the, you know, deferred register setup, we then want to call this class modblocks.register and then passing in the mod event bus right here in our tutorial mod constructor. Fairly straightforward. We've seen this with the mod items before and there we go. However, this is not quite it because to register blocks, Right? We have to register the block and that would then be the representation instead of the world. And we also need to register a block item that is associated with that block. And because we need these two steps, what we'll have is two helper methods over here. So let's start. Those are going to be quite interesting. So, you know, you might want to check the GitHub repository for this one. We're going to have a private static and then we're going to have an angle bracket, uppercase T, extends the block class, closing angle bracket, void. Right, so we're returning a void over here, and this is the register block item method, which takes in a string name parameter, as well as a registry object of type T, of type uppercase T, which we're going to call block in this case, and we'll import this class too. So click on this alt and enter, and then here we're going to say mod items. Dot items. We're using the items deferred register, calling the register method, passing in the name, and then a supplier of a new block item. Once again, tab to auto complete it. Here, we're going to pass in a block dot get, and then we're going to pass in new item dot properties. And this is going to register our block item that is associated with the block that we register. The way they re-register our blocks, well, that is through another helper method, and that's going to be a private static. Once again, angle bracket uppercase T extends block. And this one's and this in this case actually returns a registry object of type T. We're gonna call this the register block method, passing in a string name parameter and a supplier of type T. That's gonna be our block in this case. Once again, we're gonna hit Alt and Enter to import this from Java Util function and then here we have a registry object of type t i'm going to call this to return because this registry object we wanted to return that's going to be equal to the blocks deferred register dot register here passing in the name and then the supplier block no errors should be present we can then call the register block item method passing in the name and then to return very important there you go and then we're going to return to return 
ending it with a semicolon and our basic structure is done. This is the basic setup for the mod blocks. Now, when it comes to registering blocks and their items, you can go a lot of different ways about this as well. You can loop through all of the blocks and create items like that. I personally don't like it that way. I personally like to do it exactly like this. And that's why we're doing it like this. And that's going to be okay. And now, how do we register a block? Well, that is going to be, once again, a public static final. This time, once again, a registry object, but this time of type block. In this case, it's going to be the alexandride underscore block equal to the register block method that we've just created over here. This is the alexandride underscore block here as a name, making sure we write this correctly. Then a supplier of a new block. In this case, you can see this one right here. This one takes in a block behavior, tab to autocomplete, dot properties, tab to autocomplete, dot of, tab to autocomplete, and now we can give it all sorts of different properties. So if we put in a dot over here, you can see there's quite a few properties that you can choose from. What I highly recommend you do is number one, you just try out a bunch of them and see what happens. We will take a look at strength. This is going to be a 4F. We will then also call the requires correct tool for drops. And then lastly, the sound method, which changes the sound type over here. I'm going to change this to amethyst. I think that works because we have sort of a gem and I think that that's fine. One extremely important thing is that you will not be able to mine your blocks yet. They will not drop anything if you mine them, even if we have this requires correct tool for drops method right here, because we have not defined a loot table. Very important that this is not going to drop anything yet. It doesn't matter with what you mine it, whether or not with your hand or your or a, a pickaxe or an axe or whatever. It is not going to drop anything. That is a future tutorial. But with this registered, well, this would now be in the game and we could spawn it. Now, let's then actually go into the tutorial mode class and add it to a creative mode tab first. We're not going to add it to the ingredients. I think adding it to the building blocks makes more sense. So with a new if statement over here, event.get tab key, creative mode tabs dot building blocks. And then in here, we're going to say event dot accept and then pass in mod blocks dot alexandrite block. And now the alexandrite block is added to the building blocks creative mode tab. Very nice. With this done, well, we now go on to our assets and this is going to be a bit more complicated than the item. Last time we've seen the item has item model JSON files. Well, now we need a couple more things. Let's first of all create the entire folder structure that we need and then we're going to be good. So assets tutorial mod, we're going to right click new directory called block states. Very important block states is written exactly like this inside of your tutorial mod or the folder that is named after your mod ID. Under models, we want to right click new directory called block and the same thing under textures, right click new directory called block as well. We're going to start at the very top and we're going to work our way down. So in the block states folder, we're going to right click new file and there's going to be the alexandride underscore block dot JSON. The name of this file has to match the name given right here to the register block method. Very important that those two match. And then I'm going to type out the block states JSON file and I'll explain what it is and what it does. It's going to have the variance over here. That's going to be an object, then empty quotation marks object, which will have a model right here. And that model is going to be tutorial mod colon block slash alexandrite underscore block. That is the basic block states JSON file. Now, what the frick is this? Well, a block can have different, different values. So those are block states. Let's say, for example, you have wheat and that can, of course, grow over time. Those are different block states. So it has a H block state property, basically, that determines, hey, we actually want to use a different model, right? So this, as you can see, points to a model file. Now, because this is a very basic block that literally just has well, one model and it's never going to change its texture, so to speak, or its model, we only point to one model without any variant. That's basically the way that this is set up. Please also double check that you've written all of this correctly. I've seen any number of typos inside of a block state JSON file and an item model JSON file and a blocks, block model JSON file. Uh, it is actually crazy. Make sure that all of this is written correctly. And this now, right, the model right here points to a model file in the models folder instead of tutorial mod, instead of the block folder, and we're looking for an alexandrite underscore block, block model JSON file. 
And that is going to be very interesting. So if we then go to models block over here and create a new file, I'm going to call this exactly what it needs to be, alexandra underscore block dot json. Then this is going to be quite interesting because this will look eerily similar to something we've seen before. It's going to have a parent, Minecraft colon slash or block slash cube underscore all, and a textures object right here. And that object is going to have an all over here, an all field with tutorial mod colon block slash alexandrite underscore block. And you can see this almost looks exactly the same as an item model JSON file. In fact, they look co crazily similar, right? As you can see, there's barely any changes when I switch between them. And the reason is, well, that is pretty much because this is a sort of a similar thing for a block, right? The block states JSON file, we set down a block inside of the world. It says, hey, what are we, what block states do we have? What model do we have to display? It points to this particular model file, Quabam, it finds it. It says, okay, how do we display this? Well, we want the same texture on all sides of the cube. And that texture is defined as the alexandrite underscore block dot PNG instead of the textures block folder. So it's similarly the same thing as we've done with the item. And there you go. So let's copy over the alexandrite block PNG. This is, of course, going to be available to you for download as well. And then now the texture here is done. If we were to jump into the game right now, the item or rather the, the block itself would have a texture inside of the world, but it would not have a texture inside of the inside of the, the inventory and it also wouldn't have a name. So we also need an item model JSON file for your block because, well, let's think about this. We have registered a custom item right here and that obviously needs an item model JSON file. So in a models item, we're going to right click new file. I'm going to call this the alexandrite underscore block dot json. Now, luckily, the item model json files for blocks are super easy because they just simply have a parent right here. And that parent is going to be tutorial mod colon block slash alexandrite underscore block. Basically, this simply refers back to the block model json file right here. And it's going to display the block in a three dimensional way inside of the inventory like any other block basically that you're used to. That's literally what this does. And those are the three different adjacent files you will always need for any block that you register. And then of course, we also need a translation. So in the en underscore us json file, we're going to make a new entry that's going to be block dot tutorial mod dot alexandrite underscore block. And that is going to be the block of alexandrite. Very straightforward, right? Just the translation. There's nothing crazy going on right here. I think that that should be fairly self-explanatory. And yeah, that is the whole idea. That is the entire thing done. And that is going to be the first block over here added to the game. So I would say let's just jump into the game and see if it works. All right, finally, back in Minecraft. And let's take a look. The building blocks were already in there. And at the very bottom, you can see the block of Alexandroid added. And it sounds like uh, Amethyst. Maybe I have to, you know, push this up just a little bit. Let me just, there you go. And then now, maybe that has to be pushed up in post. But that is absolutely amazing. So the sound already works over here. And of course, the block works both in item form as well as inside of the world absolutely fantastic but as we've seen before one block is none block so let's add a second one too and as we've seen before adding the second one is usually i mean much easier right so for a second one we once again want to go back to our mod blocks class and simply add a public static final registry object of type block over here this is going to be the raw underscore alexand alexandrite underscore block equal to the register block method. This is the raw underscore alexandrite underscore block here. And this is going to be a new block again with block behavior dot properties dot of and we're simply going to do a similar thing. So this is going to have a street three strength requires correct tool and we'll actually have no new sound for this. We're just going to keep the normal sound that would be stone basically. In the tutorial mod class, we can then also add this to the creative mode tab. So accept mod blocks under dot raw underscore alexandrite underscore block. So it's now also added to the creative mode tab. And we're once again going to use our help over here. First of all, in the lang, I'm simply going to duplicate this line. So I'm clicking on this control D. I then need to add a comma over here. 
and then changing the name right here to raw underscore alexandrite. And then this is going to be the block of raw alexandrite, I assume, or is it raw alexandrite block? One way or the other, it doesn't matter. Also, it's very easy to change if we ever do choose to change it. So that one is done. The translation is in there. And now we're going to use the same trick that we've used before. So we're going to take the alexandrite underscore block JSON file and we're going to drag it into the same folder while holding control. This little plus appears and now we can duplicate this. And the awesome thing is we can then simply change this to raw underscore alexandrite underscore block. I'm going to hit OK. And the same thing then inside over here. So we're now pointing to a raw alexandrite block block model JSON file. So in the block model JSON file, the same thing, drag it into the same folder changing its name okay and add and we're going to change what texture it points to and then the same and last thing here in the item model json file drag it into the same folder while holding control raw underscore alexandrite underscore block dot json okay and this then points to the raw alexandrite block right here we then simply need the texture and of course that is what i have it's going to be the raw underscore alexandrite underscore block dot png and all of a sudden the second block also has been successfully added. So you can see it's really not that crazy when you have one block done, then it's not that bad. Now, what you might say is, well, wait a second. What if I have like 12 or 15 or 100 different blocks? Do I really need all of these JSON files every time? Yes. For every block you add, you will need a block states JSON file. You will need a block model JSON file and you will need an item model JSON file. However, luckily, because people are not crazy, there is an automated way that we can basically well, create the JSON files with, which will be seen in a future tutorial as well. But at first, I want you to make them manually here in this case, because you need to understand what each of the components do, right? The block states JSON file is basically determines what model we're choosing. The model determines how the block is displayed, where the textures are located. The item model determines how it looks inside of the inventory. Very important that you understand each of these components so you can also troubleshoot. But for the time being, let's jump into the game again and see our second block added as well. All right, and here we are again, and let's take a look in the building blocks over here in the very bottom. Raw Alexandrite, absolutely freaking fantastic. There it is, and it has been added, and it works totally fine. Absolutely freaking fantastic. That is exactly what we like to see. One more thing when it comes to troubleshooting. If the texture or, you know, there's no texture inside of the inventory, then there isn't always an issue with your item model JSON file, right? If there is no texture inside of the world, but there is a texture in the inventory, it has to be the block states JSON file. If both textures don't work, both inside of the world and inside of the inventory, then it can be any of the JSON files that we've just seen. Double, triple, quadruple check all of their spelling. Make sure the textures and the folders are all named correctly. And then hopefully you should be good to go. And that is custom blocks added to Minecraft. Awesome. As always, all of the code is available down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time, we'll add a custom creative mode tab. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.